Right, well, I've got here uh, the Letters of a Dead Man by Prince Hermann von Puckler, Muscow. They're the, really the letters that Puckler wrote to his divorced wife, and which were, he then published as the Letters of a Dead Man. Puckler inherited vast estates in what we now call Germany, also inherited great debts. He married very well, but his wife did not inherit as she and he had expected. So they made the bizarre arrangement of him divorcing her and try coming to England to try and find a rich English bride. So it's a pretty weird uh, origin for a book. And yet, you know, it's the most comprehensive and certainly the most compelling account of what uh, it was like uh, for a foreigner to visit this country in the 1820s. So he describes the luxury of English clubs and hotels Stairs and rooms are always adorned with fresh carpets and rugs. Even scales are not lacking, so that you can daily ascertain your own weight, a favourite hobby of the English. You never see the numerous staff without shoes. I mean, I find that pretty extraordinary because uh, presumably, therefore, in Germany, you did see the, the servants of a club um, uh, without shoes. A porter is unfailingly at his post, ready to deal with greatcoats and umbrellas. Umbrellas! He then has a special passage about how unbelievably important umbrellas are in England and how they're constantly being uh, stolen. That's a kind of detail that you'll find on, on every page. Here you have various mannerisms. The custom of half reclining instead of sitting, of occasionally stretching out full length on the carpet at the feet of the ladies, of crossing one leg over the other so you hold one foot in your hand, of putting your hands in the armholes of your vest. All these postures have already migrated into the best and most exclusive circles. He's got lots of anecdotes about actresses and very careful descriptions of the way they... Um, the notorious Madame Vestris. Her beautiful legs are especially famous and are a standing topic in the theatrical reviews in the newspapers. Quite interesting. She often puts them on display while dressed in male attire. <laughs> They are of such elegant proportions, so sweetly muscular, that the sight of them is ravishing for an art lover. He seems to go to the theatre more or less every night when he's in London. In the National Theatre of England, where their greatest dramatic talents are developed, where immortal artists such as Garrick, Mrs Siddons and Miss O'Neill once enchanted us with their majesty, and where heroes like Keane, Kemble and Young are still performing, uh, you, he says you still have um, all this... Uh, squalid uh, prostitution going on and he says such indignities offer additional proof that Napoleon was right to call the English a nation of prosaic shopkeepers. Of course there are some tedious passages because he's very very obsessed by phrenology. It seems impossible to believe that. Next I visited the West India docks and warehouses, a facility so immense that even the most cold-blooded person must be overcome with awe at England's grandeur and power. What an amount of capital is piled up here in buildings, wares and ships. It took me a full half hour to walk around the man-made basin, which is 30 feet deep and surrounded by warehouses and sheds, some of them five or six stories high. Gosh, here's Henriette Sontag. He, he, he kind of implies he had a, an affair with her. Billy the Rat Killing Dog. Um, Billy the Rat Killing Dog, he, you know, he describes the fairgrounds and, and this extraordinary dog called Billy, which could kill a hundred rats in, in um, a few minutes. He's always interested in how things are done, of course, so he doesn't just marvel at it. And he, he speculates that some of the rats actually pretend to be dead as the best way of her surviving this dreadful experience, so that in fact uh, Billy hasn't killed quite as many as people suppose. He goes to the British Museum um, and, you know, he's not very impressed at all. Uh, it's a peculiar mishmash of art objects and naturalia, curiosities, books and models housed in a deplorable building. This, of course, is before the, the great building in Bloomsbury that we now have. Um, and at the entrance, above the staircase, enormous giraffes stand like stuffed sentries, or better, emblems of English taste. <laughs> and he'll occasionally interrupt the letters to say, and now I have to eat my, uh, my special um, uh, boiled egg or whatever. So it makes it even more... Um, Exciting. 